One of the fundamental ignorances or delusions about the nature of reality is that it is external to us happening to us when in actuality it is an internal rendering that is happening for us. So whatever's arising is ultimately for our benefit. And it's not that this is necessarily ultimately true. It's that we can use that particular lens to wake up, to liberate, to access joy right and so it's a far more useful way to see reality and this is what I'm really interested in is what is the most useful way to see reality in order to experience less suffering or in order to experience the joy of being in order to experience our own inherent beauty wisdom love right in order to know ourselves as that and that's all the wisdom teachings are is that they're not about what is ultimately true like it's all made up Everything, all of it, it's all made up. Tantra knows this, Tantra says this. There's a certain point where it's like you will let go of the teachings as well, right? Um, So it's not about arguing about what is right and what is wrong and is this true and is this not true. No, it's far more beneficial to go, what's useful for me to believe in order to experience less suffering, right? And so, for example, when I look at the world, I look at at reality as such. (laughs) Um, You know, in the Western world, we believe in the ideology of capitalism and our economies function according to the ideologies of capitalism. And we use the ideologies of capitalism to exploit humans, labor, um, to exploit resources, right? And in essence, to destroy the earth and to destroy community the relationality that ties us all together as humans and so is that useful well it is if you want to destroy everything you know um what would be more useful and i just i've read this before i've owned this before but i just bought this again uh yes charles eisenstein hmm Sacred economics, money, gift, and society in the age of transition. And in essence, what this is saying is what happens if we rewrite the story of how we relate to money, of how we relate to, of how we relate to economies, of how we relate to business? What happens if we write a different story? What happens if we write a story that is beneficial? Because if you look at Western societies, homelessness, addiction, all of these things have increased right and sure on on one level there might be like increased standard of living as such and yet material increased standard of living beyond a certain point does not lead to an increased sense of wholeness and and wellness and joy in the human right so what is useful to believe what is useful to see how is it you know what is useful for navigating and the way that I've been orientating over the last four five six weeks I've been really feeling into what would joy do right recognizing that the joy of beingness is accessible in every single moment I was starting to realize that I'd got stuck again on the delusion that when the conditions and circumstances of my life line up in a particular way then I will feel joy. So then what I'm trying to do is control the circumstances of my life so I can then feel the way I want to feel. And it goes the other way. It's like, why don't I just directly feel that? Why don't I just feel joy regardless of the circumstances, right? Go direct to the way I want to feel. And so this is, it can be really useful if you're you know, attached to a particular goal You know, if you're really focused on earning a certain amount of money or you're really focused on having certain material goods or you're really focused on having certain relationships, simply ask yourself, how will I feel when that happens, right? I'll feel loved or I'll feel whole or whatever it might be. And then ask yourself, what is stopping me from feeling that right now? 
And when you ask that question with sincerity, you know, genuinely, things will float up. The mind will generate objections, which is fantastic because then you can see what is stopping you, preventing you from feeling the thing already. And once you see what is preventing you from experiencing the thing already, then you can do whatever is required to dissolve it, right? To digest it. And then you just feel the thing already, right? Love is always there. Love is always there. Joy is always there. Wisdom is always there. Beingness is always there. You don't have to achieve anything to drop into these things. There's nothing you have to do as such, right? All that's required is a sincere desire to experience and access to become that, become love, become joy, you know, become wisdom. The wisdom field is always there. Learn how to listen to it as such. Mm. And what I notice is the more I do this practice, the more I do this practice, reality is reshaping itself around me and what I'm experiencing is shifting and changing. Um, and that feels amazing and it feels incredible, right? And to me it feels like there is nothing more revolutionary in some ways than to continue to access joy for example even in the midst of horror and you know there's some Instagram clips up at the moment of some young men in Gaza and Palestine and this is their resistance this is how they are resisting this is how they are claiming their power is that they are still choosing to feel joy in the middle of a genocide and if they can do it in the middle of a genocide what's preventing you from doing it in the middle of your life right and sending blessings out to all of the humans all of the humans that are experiencing suffering and loss as a result particularly in Gaza right in Palestine in Israel and all of the wars that are waging across the planet right now. All of the humans. And this is the interesting thing, is that when we choose to open up, and when I started to choose to fully open up to joy, what happened was I had to go through grief first. There was, there was a few weeks <laughs> of grief, and I was willing, I was willing to fully feel that grief because my desire was to orientate to the joy, was to orientate to the joy. Your experience of reality does not depend upon your external circumstances and nor does it even depend upon your internal conditioning. Mastery of self, mastery of self is about being able to recognize and operate from that place where you choose where it is that you orientate to and where it is that you move from. Mm. And these are the kind of things that I practice and teach and shelter the community that I am co-creating. And these are the kind of things I work with with clients who come to me for mentoring. Hmm. Yeah. Or at least right now in this moment, October 10th, 2024, that's what's unfolding, that's what's happening. Who knows where I'll be and what I'll be doing in a year's time or two years time, five years time, ten years time. Who knows when you will watch this. But yeah. Blessings on the goddess. Blessings on the unfolding. What if what was happening was exactly what you needed to become the one? Right? Yeah. I'll just end with that.